Hello. There are many paths to success, and you're going to hear a lot about them today. But what's your individual path to success? Is it a path that starts in next September, when you've just been made redundant and you're looking for something now? Is it a path in Dublin, when you're in Shannon? You know, what is your individual path to success? I believe that the technology advances that have taken place allow us to create individu individual paths for you so that we can customise learning to suit each individual, so we can build a path together. So consider for a minute that if you've just been made redundant, you individually, um, it happens all the time. Each year in, in Ireland, um, there's about one million transitions of people moving from a job in one company to a job in another company or from a job in their company to another job in the same company, or being made redundant and unfortunately looking for, for a new job. And the average person has 10 job changes in their, in their life, between 10 and 12. The average person has between five and seven career changes in their life. So this is something that we all face at some point or, or another. It's not like it was once upon a time when if you were a, a carpenter, as my dad was a carpenter, it was expected that I would be a carpenter and that's what I would be all my life. Or if you were, uh, as in this picture here, um, a, a cobbler working with um, a craftsperson and you would learn from that person and you would have complete individualised, personalised learning. But that changed with the Industrial Revolution and the cobbler disappeared and mass production resulted in um, everybody having to go to a shop to buy a shoe. You don't go to a cobbler to get one personally made for yourself. And the same thing happened with education and training, where that sit by Nelly type of role of a craftsperson supporting the young apprentice developing into their career was replaced by mass education. But technology is changing. Again, another revolution. And this time, it's a revolution in mass customization. Um, I have a slide there from Ford that say they've mass produced 7.5 million Mustangs so far. Um, so every single Mustang customised to the individual. BMW say that no two cars that leave their plant are the same anymore. Adidas and Nike produce um, websites where, um, as they say, you design it, we make it and we deliver it within three or four weeks. Um, that's mass customisation across uh, all the supply of products and services. Some of these you may not be aware of, or some of them you'll hear about very soon. I'm sure you're familiar with Netflix, where you no longer have to get your TV times and decide you know, what programs you want to watch and when it, you need to make time available to watch that particular program. You decide when you want to watch it and where you want to watch it. 3D printers can print objects exactly as you want them. So you can design your own shoes and print them yourself. Um, there's two machines that I show there, which is the Sprite and Coca-Cola vending machines. These are new machines that are going to be all around the world shortly. The Sprite machine, for example, allows you to produce your individual drink. Um, you can customise the drink that you want. That machine can deliver over 1,000 ingredients to make the taste that you specifically are looking for. So if that's happening around the world, why isn't it happening with, with education? Why isn't it happening with training? Um, the types of customisation that I've just displayed there fall into a number of different categories. There's collaborative customization where an institution can work with an individual in producing the customized product for them. There's adaptive customization where things are just adapted to suit what the person is looking for. I have a slide there that shows a, a type of transparent customization. And I think that's the kind of customization that should be available in education and training, where it's totally transparent to the individual, that they get a customized learning experience based on their individual needs. You're getting that at the moment because of your interaction with social media. Um, if you use Gmail, for example, Google will analyse the words in your Gmail messages and identify the things that you're interested in and automatically target advertising at you. So that, for example, when I was using Google Maps to find my route down here this morning, I'll end up getting information about hotels in the area. Um, that kind of transparent customization is happening to us all the time. But it's not happening in education. We still have that kind of product approach to, to education and training, with people having to attend that course in Dublin or that course that starts in September. But we're all different. I mean, we'll, we'll hear a lot of stories today about where people are coming from and where they're trying to get to. And I believe that technology can support each individual in getting from where they are to where they want to go to. 
with totally personalized, individualized, or learner-centered approaches. Um, I have some experience with this. Um, in 1999, I was working as an instructor in, in FOSS at the time, in Cabra, and we had a demand for um, companies, Intel, um, Hewlett Packard, IBM, manufacturing companies that were setting up in the country at the time and were recruiting what they thought were multi-skilled maintenance individuals. But Ireland at the time had a tradition of, of training electricians to do electrical work, um, fitters to do mechanical work, and the companies that were looking for multi-skilled people um, used us to train the electrical staff in mechanical skills and the mechanical staff in electrical skills. But as soon as we started training individuals, they got jobs straight away, before they, they finished their training even. Even when the company heard that they were on a training course, they got a job. It was so successful that you know, we obviously had a difficulty. If we started with a group of 20 people, very quickly we ended up with two or three people, and we had to support them in, in continuing to the end of the course. So we developed um, a model of flexible training that resulted in training being available any time a space became available. So if one person finished, another person could start. When somebody got a job, um, that created a space, and another person could, could come in. That kind of individual personalized learning um, was difficult at the time. We didn't have the kind of technolo technology supports. I have a graph there that shows the spend on technology infrastructure. Um, and at the time, we had just reached a billion euro spend in technologies for, for learning. Um, so we were part of something that was happening at the time. But the take up was fairly slow and it didn't seem to happen and spending died off. But um, I'm not sure if you can see the figures on this, but last year there was an incredible increase, six and a half billion euros of investment, six and a half billion euros of investment in learning technologies. That's a recognition around the world that the, the, the infrastructure, the resources are available now to support learning with technology. So I'm going to give an example of some of the ways that, that might work. Um, so the first set of tools are associated with developing profile. Um, so profiling tools that can assist an individual in identifying all of the skills that they have, more than just the CV, but building a por profile of all of the experiences and all of the things that they've done in the past that would be useful to an employer. Employers are very good at designing profiles. They can give you a profile of the individual that they're looking for. So by combining the two of those, you can build a picture of the gaps between where an individual is coming from and where an individual is trying to go to. Um, recognition of prior learning is something that we talk about all the time. But one of the difficulties with recognition of prior learning is that we might have a person who's coming into a course and recognize all of the previous learning that they have, but we still have to start them on day one and let them repeat all of the things that they've done in the past and do the things that they haven't done until they're finished the course. But to really take account of recognition of prior learning, you should be able to shortcut a course for an individual, recognize the things that they already know, and define the objectives that they need to reach in order to get to where they're trying to go to. So that's the first part of it, in building a profile, um, identifying the objectives that an individual is trying to achieve, the second part is building the content and resources that can uh, support a person bridging that gap. And again, technology is fairly good now at assembling that content and putting it together in a format that's individualized to that person. But we need a teacher or a support or facilitator to, to manage that process and to support the learner. You know, you as an individual, if I said, you know, I'm going to build your profile and I'm going to get this content and now you're going to just start learning. Um, it, it just doesn't happen like that. You know, you need support. And scaffolding is the, the term that's used to describe the nature of that support. Scaffolding is a way of, of putting a lot of support in place at the start and building a learner's capacity to manage their own learning. And as the learner builds that capacity, the, the scaffolding can be removed, you know, and the building then stays, and the learner stays as an independent learner. Um, learning analytics are a series of tools and um, um, reports that are available to, to understand that learning process, how that scaffolding is, is developing, um, how the learner is achieving their, their outcomes, what the learner is actually doing, and report that back to the facilitator, to the teacher, to help them identify the things that they need to do. 
This means that the, the tutor changes their role from being that sage on the stage, this kind of presentation kind of platform, to being a guide on the side, a guide that's supporting that individual learning moving through their path. It sounds challenging, and it is a challenging role for, for a teacher or a trainer, because at any point in time you will have learners that are nearly finished the program, that are ready for certification, you have learners that are just starting and need a lot of support, and you have learners that have just <coughs> They've reached a, a point where they just can't, um, they can't progress. You know, they, they've, they have a block in progressing through the, the understanding of some subject or uh, some skill. So the guide on the side supports a learner through that process until they're ready to, to be certified. So we need flexible certification systems. We can't just wait for exams in August or we can't have exams at set times. Um, certification should be available when the person is ready to be certified, when they've finished their course, so that they can progress to where they want to go to as quickly as possible. Uh, through experience, we know that sometimes that individual path needs to be repeated over and over again. Um, in some of the career changes that I had, I moved from being an electrician to electronic technician to a computer technician to being a software person to being a trainer and then a manager. I mean, these are, were huge changes that didn't just result as a didn't just happen as a result of just some <coughs> small change like this. You know, as you move into a job, the, the process continues and continues, and that's what I'm talking about when I when I say mass customization of learning. The things that need to be in place in order for it to work are good quality content and resources, the pedagogical competencies or the, the teaching competencies, the skills of the of the teacher trainer, the technology infrastructure to make sure that everything is available and works, and programs designed so that they're flexible in the way that they're, they're designed, that they can take account of all of the individuals and where they're coming from, and that assessments are designed so that they're capable of being taken at any time. And then the structures need to be in place. So our institutions, our, our centres, they need to be set up in such a way, and I believe it's possible to do this, that there are profiling places that people can go to, to assist them in identifying where they're coming from and a system in, in identifying where it is that you're trying to get to. And that the structures aren't um, the classroom based where there's a podium on the top and people sitting in a room, but there are learning spaces where people can individually learn and be supported by that, that guide on the side type of approach. So the secret really is to stop thinking about teaching and learning and the whole FET provision as product based and think about you know, courses that are running in Dublin in September, and instead think of learning as a process, a process that each individual has to go through in order to meet the aim of where, where they're trying to get to. There's a huge amount of research around the world on this at the moment, a huge amount of money being spent on it, I mentioned six and a half billion euros, um, and there's a lot of stuff on the internet that you, that you can find to find out more about this. I'm not saying that it's not a challenge, it's the challenge is massive. Um, it's, it's a huge culture change in the way that we approach things. But I think it can be done. I believe it can be done. Um, I believe that we should do it. Um, so let, let's, let's do it. Thank you. Thank you.